Hi everyone. Welcome to another video on art therapy. My name is Lauren Fallett and I work for a Holistic Health Counseling Center. For today's video post, we're going to be doing what I like to call uh, an air landscape drawing or painting. Um, what we're going to work with today is a large piece of paper, some watercolor paints, and I'm also going to be using chalk pastels. Okay, so let's get started. Before we jump into the art making, which I'm going to be doing on camera with you today, I did want to give some background into why I have found this type of directive to be helpful in my own life and in working with uh, individuals in art therapy or in a group setting. Um, Often it's difficult to talk about emotions, and so I find that when we uh, focus on landscapes or weather patterns, it's easier for us to discuss what's going on internally. Uh, so something that I've been using often in groups is uh, an oracle deck called The Enchanted Map by Colette Baron reed And I love this selection because it contains different cards that we can use for inspiration to really think about, okay, what's going on inside of me and how does it relate to experiences that I'm going through? Um, so I'll just show it here. There's different cards with different titles. Um, and when we think about these cards, I often like to think of an inner map. So with this directive, it's really thinking about Internally, what does it look like inside my body? If I were to map out different places or feelings, where does it live? What might it look like? Um, so this card is called Solitude. And it looks like a very isolated structure, very little windows. This place is called the Dragon's Lair. Think about this one as a very protected space, hard to get to perhaps. This one's the Field of Dreams, the Wishing Well, um, let me see here, the Mountain. And when we think about all of these places, what it could symbolize for us in our emotional journey. Think about with the mountain, things we're overcoming or obstacles that we're having to face and what that brings up for us. Uh, this one is called Deep Freeze. Sometimes we feel stagnant or as if we're hibernating in some ways. Storm Fields, if we're up against a difficult decision or a tumultuous uh, situation in our lives. And the last one I'll show here is Into the Unknown. So with these cards, it gives us a sense of a uh, different landscape within us, and it connects us to our external experiences. So that's our goal here, is to externalize what might be difficult for us to put into words. I did want to say that there's no right or wrong way to create an emotional landscape or inner map. Um, really, it's about focusing in on what you're experiencing in the moment, what is going on with your emotions, how is your body feeling, and how can we translate that onto paper or into a sculpture or a collage. Uh, so it's really trying to dig into those hard to reach places and externalize something that maybe we've been holding on to or having trouble uh, really talking about. So an example I'll give here, let's say if I took the card storm fields. Um, my way of connecting to this card is thinking about what inner tension have I been experiencing? When have I felt a sense of chaotic movement uh, or a sense of anxiousness, right? A sense of fear, a sense that something in my life is moving faster than I am prepared for. So that's really the task at hand is figuring out how can I draw inspiration from these cards to connect to my inner world, my inner emotions, and really express something that's needing to be expressed. I'm going to get us started. I'm going to create my own visual landscape and map on paper, uh, and we can do that together if you'd like. 
Just to show you what I'm working with, I have a 12 by 18 mixed media paper. For this, I love working bigger, and you can even work on part of your map here and then add on uh, different areas so you can decide if you want to add another paper up here and expand the map. It's a great way to continue working with this theme. I have uh, watercolor paints here, and I'm also going to be working with chalk pastels. Feel free to mix and match, use different materials. Um, it's really up to you. Oil pastels, colored pencils, depending on how much detail you want to add, would also be great for this project. So I'm going to tilt my screen down and start working. Okay, so I have my paper here, chalk pastels, watercolors. I also am showing you two cards that I'm taking inspiration from, from the Enchanted Map deck. So this one is called Solitude, and this one is called Field of Dreams. And for my inner landscape today, I'd really like to combine these two. Lately, I've been feeling very inspired, and so I'm wanting to maybe create something that reflects that. So I'm going to go ahead with my chalk pastel and just walk you through a process. So there's going to be some field-like landscape here, and I want it to look a little bit overgrown. Because often I feel like uh, an open field that's sort of been untouched, that's how I think about um, dreams or, or thoughts about a future that hasn't yet been explored. And so that's the goal in making this form of landscape. And I think I want it to be kind of like hidden in some ways and have it sort of connect to a pond of some sort or, or waterway that might be worth a reach. So I think there's going to be a path that comes through here. And connects to this waterway. So I'm going to make little slats here. And notice how with the chalk, it's almost like painting with a brush. <clears throat> a brush. So I am just letting it dance across the page. Right now I'm adding little outlines for my slats. So this is like a boardwalk that's going to lead to this pond area. I'm going to go ahead and take my watercolor brush and some watercolors. And I'm going to add this here. And I am using a brush that has water in it. It's pretty convenient, so I'd like to do that for these quick watercolors. There's sort of a waterway, a pond, and I'm going to go ahead and build up the grass. What I love about chalk when it gets wet, it goes on smooth, um, so I like the different textures that it has when it's wet. So you can use different sides of your pastel. The wider side obviously takes up more area. And the thinner side, you can get more details. For my purposes, I just want to build up this area. 
and I'm going to go ahead and color the slats. So let me see if that's a color that I like. Yep. So I'm just going ahead and painting the walkway. And I can be a little bit sloppier as I go and come back in with color. That's sort of the beauty of the watercolor. And my goal is to just get different tones. And then I'm going to come back in with the chalk pastel and again build it up so it looks like the path is a little bit overgrown with the grasses. So we get to this pond and I'm thinking there's a sense of solitude that you get from being in sort of this unexplored area. But I think I want to make it a little bit more protected. So this is my process here. How do I make it feel a little bit more secluded? I might want to add some trees. Okay, so that. So the information I'm gathering from this is that within this solitude, this place of being alone with perhaps your thoughts or your feelings. Um, there's also a need for safety, and I think that's what these trees are representing for me, this need for some form of protection uh, for when I go to the space of contemplation. Um, so this is how you start to really connect with yourself as you're creating this and this could happen during the process or it can happen uh, a little bit later on but really talking to yourself and saying well what what is the significance of this if there is any maybe it's just I wanted trees and it looks nice and I like that um, or perhaps there's some significance to it I also noticed that I want them to be willow trees and you know the weeping willow trees I don't exactly know what they are supposed to look like but I'm I'm drawn to this idea of making them sort of flow down so that's the goal there I'm gonna actually wet the chalk a little bit to fill in the trees So I like the chalk in addition to the water because it still maintains a texture. Okay. Okay. Good. And so, so far the feelings in this landscape that I feel represented a sense of groundedness, stability, security. Um, there's some aloneness, being alone, but in a way that's not necessarily a bad thing, a positive form of solitude and not feeling necessarily empty while this landscape doesn't have um, maybe a lot of people. It does have growth. There's trees. There's grasses. So it's very much an alive space. So I'm just going to go ahead do a little more.
my sense is that this this space is going to get filled in with lots of trees. And I'm trying to create some form of depth by having some of the trees be lighter than others. And of course, I'm sort of going through this quickly while also talking about my process that you can take your time and sort of navigating and mapping out your landscape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a green color. I think that might be a little bit easier than the chalk. So here's my willows. And they are called weeping willows, so I'm sort of paying attention to that in my mind, um, connecting to that emotion. Okay. But I'm definitely connected to the sense of security. Just having these trees here it feels very safe. And I like texture. I'm also thinking about how I'm making this. So I'm very much liking these quick squiggly lines and perhaps that's part of how I'm translating my current emotions, right? There's some maybe anxiousness and making sure, oh, I'm putting this here or there. So that's just my natural anxiety, I think, coming through. Maybe wondering, oh, what, what else do I need to explore with these willows? Okay. So almost like creating a forest cover with these trees. That's sort of what this feels like. It feels like a cover. So there's some holding in this space. I'm going to go ahead and just make a little bit of a, let me see if it's a color. A little bit of a background. This is my landscape here, coming together, all these varied forms. And what I feel like it needs, it's all of this sort of earthy tones, you've got the walkway leading to this space. Uh, I'd like there to be some color. And so I'm noticing there's a lot of green and brown, the green and brown connected to the earth, very grounded. Uh, and then there is some part of me that finds comfort in solitude. And so in this landscape, I want there to be some aspects of uh, color and life. That um, this isn't lonely, this isn't a sad place. It's a place of contemplation and life. So. That's what I'm going to add here. I'm going to add just pops of color all around. And that's sort of the sense of where I think this landscape needs to be right now. That's how I think it's capturing varied emotions. And so you can see you can keep adding, you can pause. It's up to you how you want to continue to work with your landscape. So. Okay. 
trying to get a sense that there's color throughout. It's integrated. So this is like a good stopping point for my inner landscape for today. So we've got a forest of trees. These are different willow trees, um, an airiness in the background, a pathway leading to this pond with a lot of flowers and overgrowth. I'm going to pause it here. Thank you so much for watching my process. I hope that was helpful to you and seeing how you might organically come up with uh, an inner landscape. Um, I was thinking as I was creating this that the image really reflects a snapshot of what a part of you is feeling, experiencing in that moment, a part of you that you're tapping into. Uh, and that's why grounding ourselves and taking time to be mindful and aware of what we're experiencing is so helpful. Sometimes we're very much focused on one part of ourselves and one feeling, and we might neglect other areas. So it's helpful to ask yourself, which part of me is, is needing to be heard or seen today and allowing that part to come forward. Um, so this part, that I was connected to, very much connected to the part that enjoys solitude and also is experiencing some um, creativity and inspiration um, in that solitude. So that's very much what I think this picture is reflecting and there might be other insights that I come up with later. But I appreciate you seeing my process and I hope to hear in the comments what your process has been like um, or ideas that you have. I just wanted to add that one other thing that I really love about the visual of a map or a landscape is that you can navigate and choose where on the page your emotions lie. So maybe as you're creating this, you have an area for sadness or solitude, an area for relaxation. And this is a great way to start visualizing uh, how you're going to manage your emotions as well. So visualization is key in containing our feelings and being able to let certain things go, to feel them, right, to allow them into our lives uh, and also manage the intensity. So I might be visualizing myself going up a mountain and then visually there might be a little uh, plateau or area to, to relax or find reprieve in this upward climb and that's what sometimes we need to remind ourselves that we can contain very intense emotions um, when they're overwhelming us so that's a great part of this visual landscape and map as well thank you again for watching this video on art therapy my name is lauren fallett and i work for holistic health counseling center i appreciate you taking the time to watch this and i hope that it's helpful to you in your own journey with art therapy. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit our website, holistichealthcounselingcenter.com or arttherapynj.com. If you'd like to book an appointment or work individually with me, I'm also accepting new clients. Okay, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Take care.